put the deck sanded down and the side deck and aft decks. I'm ready to move on to the interior of the boat. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to need to take some things out. There's a floor for the battery and a floor for the fuel tank, um, the wiring, what's left of it, and then the cables for the shifter, which are in the middle of the boat. And then I'll have all that stuff out of the way and I can get right at the surface of the interior. Plan is to um, sand it using my mouse um, um, oscillating sander. Really good detail uh, with that. And hand sanding with my soft pad and 180 to 120 grit, depending on what I um, find. The boat is, in, is covered in epoxy. So they what they did is they sanded it, stained it, epoxied it, and lots of varnish. So I'm gonna take the varnish off the best I can and not go into the epoxy if I can help it, because I, then I'll be into the stain. Some areas of the boat, it, the epoxy's been broken. Key, um, for example, the keelson and the inner keel got a lot of abuse from feed and things being dropped and oil and water. That needs to be taken all the way down to the bare wood. And then I'll restain it and then I'll epoxy it most likely um, and then hit it with varnish so it has a, a nice look, but it'll have the durability of the epoxy on top of it. Um, the rest of the boat, I'm not sure until I get through the sanding, I'm gonna find out what I have, but hoping for the best and then um, I'll go ahead and try to put the interior color um, back as close as I can and uh, find a stain that'll do that and then I'll go ahead and seal it back up and then we'll put some varnish and build it back up too. So let's get to work. Well, that completes the disassembly of the interior of the boat. I'm not going to take the seats apart. I might take this one bench seat um, just because it would be easier to sand it. But that's it for taking it apart. The rest of it I can get at with a sander and a medium uh, grit uh, 3M brown pad for scuffing, which a lot of this interior will get. If I see areas like here where we've got the varnish um, broke through, I'll try to do some staining to get it back. But it might have some scars on it on the inside that are just part of the history of the boat. And um, that's how we'll leave it. And I will, again, clean out the oil and the bilge back here by the motor, especially and then I will sand down this gray floor area and ask the owner if she would like to do something other than gray. I think gray was original. I'm gonna sand it down, find out. Back to work. In addition to pulling out the battery and fuel panels, which I've had out for a while, and I've been adding fairing compound just to flatten them out. I've also removed the supports that were down on the floor knee. They're important for the floor panels for the battery and the fuel, but they're also um, got some oil on them. So I'm gonna clean them with an isopropyl I'm sorry, mineral spirits treatment. And then I'm gonna do the floor as well, because you can see the, it's where, you know, it's where the gas and oil and dirt, water, 
it's where everything collects. And there's no drain plug in this boat. In fact, there's not a lot of drain plugs in the wage makers that I've heard about. So I'm gonna clean that out. And then the goal is to get that all clean so that I can uh, sand it so I can put in new uh, gray bilge paint in that bilge area. And then you'll notice there's a bow shelf that is fastened by a couple of fasteners and then there's um, rubber pads that are there for sound absorption and less wear on the inner hull. So I'll take that out, I'll, I'll varnish and clean that up on my bench, not in the boat. And then find some new rubber to put in there, if that's original. And then of course there's the really cool uh, center shift um, holder. There's, it's just two pieces of mahogany that are um, fastened to the inner keel and then the shifter sits down there with some spacers and it makes for a, uh, on this boat, a left hand shift and throttle, which is really cool. I'll take those out too. They're loose. Anything I can take out with a fastener except the seats, I'm going to take out just to make it easier for me to work on the boat, but also um, easier to work on those individual pieces and get them right and then probably do some Smith's um, clear penetrating epoxy sealer all of that stuff except the bow shelf are prone to be in wet area. So I'll get some Smiths on that. And then when I put the varnish on, it'll, uh, it'll look really good. The interior of the boat is not going to get stained unless I have to do some small repairs. But the rest of it is going to be just scuffed with 3M medium pad to get the flakes and things off and then go ahead and um, just put some high build varnish by Pettit and then put a, a clear uh, Pettit Captain's varnish on there. So it's originally nice and dark. Um, I'm trying to keep it that way. I've got the boat tipped up and safely shored up with my um, turnstiles or lifts. I put eight foot four by fours with a clamp system so I have a lot of outrigger. Uh, counter pressure on the boat, very secure, um, which allows me not to get into the boat physically to work on the floor. Because I can't take the seats out, this is going to be very hard to work on other than in this position. So what I've done is I've gone in 80 grit orbital on the bilge area that's painted gray. And that is very close to the original. It's a little darker. And I've ordered that from Pettit. Brand Paints. It's a bilge paint that's also gray like that. And it's made to be a little tougher than topside paint. I suppose it's probably a lot like hard racing bottom paint. Anyway, that came off pretty good. I'm really happy with how it looks. It looks like there might have been epoxy added from the seat back, which is where all the water, oil, and gas collect because there is no bilge, or excuse me, there is a bilge pump, but there's no drain plug. So I found epoxy under that paint or on top of it. It's hard to tell. Um, got it sanded smooth. I'll do a little bit of fairing to get it smooth, smooth, but overall it's in really great shape for being an area where water sits a lot so and that's why it gets a good paint versus varnish and then i will start to use my 3m medium steel wool pads they come in pads or sheets and i will literally scuff the entire surface of the interior and then when i get to areas that have been chipped like the varnish has been chipped or down on the inner keel or keelsons, which give rigidity to the boat from the inside, I'm gonna hit that with 80 grit because it's chipped enough where I could sand it down to good wood, uh, restain it, or even leave it natural, see which one looks better, and then reseal that with pettits. Um, 
high build paint, high build varnish, and really beef that up because that gets a lot of traffic. It's where the passengers step a lot. It's there's no floor, so that's the floor. So that's the next step. I've completed the detail sanding of the I would call it a back brace and then the transom knee and then keelsons which are inside the boat sometimes they have engines on them sometimes they have floors on them this is probably more for support and they didn't have covering boards or floorboards so um, they were epoxied it looks like I ended up using 80 grit 60 sometimes and I took the epoxy off because it had broken in some areas and then had let in water and back here where the oil and gas and water all collect it had broken through and it was into the wood so I ended up cleaning that up with mineral spirits to get the oil out in addition to the sanding so that'll all get restained and then um, I'll put Smith's clear penetrating epoxy sealer uh, on everything that you see that's either bare or painted. That's where the water collects. And then I will go ahead and varnish like I do with the inside with Pettit's high build and probably give the, the clear pieces a lot more because they're going to need it to be protected. So that's done. And then now on to scuffing the interior with 3M uh, medium uh, scratch pads. And then if that doesn't work, I'll go um, to their burgundy, which is heavier. So I have to experiment a little bit. I'm working on scuffing up the interior now of the boat. Remember this boat has epoxy on most of it. It looks like it was deck to bilge. So I assume the same with the seats, and I think that's why the seats look so good. It was covered probably better than the outside of the hull, but the epoxy also kept it safe from a lot of just random things being dropped and wear and tear. The only areas that I noticed were the top of the seats and then the handrail slash supports for these front seats, which would be a natural place for things to get used more by hands and um, things just rubbing on them. It looks like the previous restorer had tried to, or somebody had tried to put um, stain on top without roughing up the varnish. So it kind of laid on top. So what I did is I scuffed it up. I started with a 3M reddish brown scuff pad. Wasn't enough, then I went to 320. Still not enough, and then I went to 220 grit on my soft pad, and it allows you to sand without putting a lot of pressure on it. And I didn't want to have to put a lot of pressure on it because when I get around edges and weak areas, I didn't want to burn through. So I'm leaving the epoxy in place, stain is under it. I've taken off the varnish, and I know I've gotten through the varnish when the yellow turns into white, which is the epoxy. The areas that I had spider cracks in the varnish, a little bit of, I spend a little more attention with my soft pad on the spider cracks. Some of those were caused by failure. Other ones I think were caused by something getting dropped, breaking the surface and then allowing it to get water and moisture under it. So I just feathered those, if you wanna think of it that way. So they're right down to the epoxy, but I feathered them out without getting into the stain layer. And I've been real happy with the front seat. I've started on the dashboard. Uh, there's a few things there, but I think it's going to work out well. The owner has decided that this seat probably needs a little more attention. Um, but I'm not sure yet. I scuffed that with 80 grit uh, on Orbital and it really flattened out nice. I think in order to get rid of the dings and the dark marks, which are under the epoxy, and they were there when it was stained. So it would, it would have to go all the way down to bare wood. And I don't know if that's really 
the best use of my time and her money. It will have some character, if you want to call it that. Uh, as you move forward, every seat has less character. So we'll, uh, we'll have to figure that out. Um, I'm finding it really easy to work on, and I'm the, the, the 220 grit seems to be the one to use. So I'm going to continue with all the seats, the dashboard, and then I'm going to work my way on the sides, um, up, up, up into the, you know, the bow area a little bit. Not too. It's very nice up there because it hasn't seen any sun or abuse. So um, spend the rest of the day on this, and then we'll be ready for varnish. There's a few areas that I will stain, um, like the edges of this seat. I'm finding I did a test. It looks like cherry is really close to this original or what is the interior stain. It's not red enough to be mahogany, but it could be cherry stain they used, or just the natural aging has turned it into a cherry-like look. So um, I'm going to have to put some stain on that, and I will seal those areas that are stained, and then that sealer will help blend into the varnish, and then I'll just start laying on varnish. I'm not sure how much varnish I'll put on the inside, the seats obviously will get a lot. I think that's an area that I need to focus on. And then the bilge will get gray, which gets a lot of use. But I'll use high build for a few coats and just get get a nice coat of varnish on everything. And then I'll make a decision about where I want to really put a lot of varnish versus not needing it. So back to work. I've finished sanding and fairing and putting FAMA wood into the interior of the boat. And I even did some staining to see how it would look. And um, even where I didn't go all the way through the, um, the epoxy, which is all over the boat, I, um, I found it blended really well. And it turned out to be Old Master's cherry gel stain. And uh, I was really happy to find it worked. Um, it even uh, looks really good on the inside of... Uh, the hull where it was, I think, done natural. So um, that will help me bring the whole interior into one very close color scheme. Still working on the bench seat for the number two seat back. It's made out of cedar wood, so I'm, I'm finding even the cherries a little too dark, so I might have to go to a cedar gel stand. I'm going to try that when I put it together. So now I'm going to apply the stain from gunnel to gunnel, and I'm going to leave the deck and the outside rub rails um, for the last process of when I do the staining. I do always do my decks last. So I'm just going to start here. I'm just going to wipe my way. The inside uh, where the bilge is, where the gray is, that will be a gray paint again. I'll do that last before... I finish up with the interior. Um, decided to go and sand down the lumber, mahogany lumber dashboard. I had some raised wood. I, it was just water, I believe, and there was a crack that I fixed. I had to glue. Um, so I decided to just take it all the way down and start new. Uh, it looks a whole lot better, I think. So um, I'm just gonna start staining probably do the dash and then go ahead and maybe do the gunnels or excuse me, the, the thwarts, which is also serves an inside batten for the splash rail. Um, and then those are oak. So the spend a little time trying to make those darker, but yeah, just essentially do the whole inside of the boat. And, uh, then I'll be able to put on the two coats of, um, sealer for, from Pettit, and then I'll be able to start just applying and applying lots of uh, Pettit uh, varnish until I get it to the point where I like it, and um, then I'll just move on to the deck. So I'm going to start staining. <laughs> So the staining of the inside of the hull is done. It took me about an hour, which I was figuring on. Um, I'll let that rest for 
24 hours, let it soak in. I'll walk around again just to look for any streaks. What I did is I tried to follow the grain, even on the inside of the hull. I uh, took it on the incline, or I should say the 45 degree, just to kind of, you know, follow that pattern that was set up. And uh, the stain, if you do have a streak, it'll get caught up in that grain and you won't see it. So uh, I got the dashboard done, got everything ready to go. Um, the, the wood you see unstained will be the deck stain, which will be more of a mahogany uh, red or a Chris Craft post-war post red uh, from Lake Oswego uh, Boat Company. And I'm hoping that bringing in the red to the cherry will, you know, at the deck will help it um, you know, play together nicely. So it's very close to Chris Craft Red. It's a little bit darker. The Chris Craft Red is a little darker. Um, so I think it's going to be good. So I'll call that a night. I've completed putting the sealer from the easy, the easy uh, pedit sealer um, on the stained interior. I came to a point the other night where I was finishing the sealer on all of the boat, except for the areas that hadn't been um, sealed before, short of that. And it came to me later that night that I am going to reapply the um, epoxy that you can put on wood that's been stained. It's, uh, it's been done on this boat and it worked very well. I think the reason why this was bad because things got dropped on it, including some of the seats and just feet. There's no floorboards in this boat, so the feet of the passengers really uh, chewed up the surface of it, meaning the varnish, but not the epoxy. The epoxy did its job. So I'm gonna put the epoxy back on the keelsons in the inner keel and the stern transom area where a lot of oil and water and abuse will be heaped on the boat so that I know that'll protect it. I've restained it and it's looking good. And I'm gonna do the dash and seal her the way I did and then varnish it. I find that it's probably gonna get less abuse than anything on this boat and I'll put enough uh, varnish on it that uh, the UV rays from the sun um, won't harm it. I also think that the dashboard is probably easier to do with varnish because it doesn't have that much abuse coming at it. But also if something goes wrong or it gets scratched, it's gonna be easier, I believe, to have the varnish on the, on the dash. That will bring this episode to an end, and I will move on to the epoxy application, at least in the interior and the floor. We'll get that gray paint in the next episode. I've had most of the interior pieces on my bench being worked on different, different situations, and I will have an episode um, showing that. So thank you for subscribing. It's always nice to see those numbers going up and people commenting, which I really enjoy. And if you're enjoying this series, uh, the playlist, please hit the like button and I will continue moving on with the restoration of this wage maker um, till we're done.